Adidas is one of the world's oldest sportswear companies that has evolved over the past 70 years. The company has experienced highs and lows all throughout its history. Two brothers founded a shoe company until they decided to split up and become rivals. In this video, we take a look at how the brand started, its ties with the Nazi party of Germany, and how the conflict between brothers birthed the rival brand Puma. Adolf Dassler was so passionate about sports that he began experimenting with specialist footwear for athletes. In 1924, he and his brother Rudolf officially registered their company Dassler Brothers Shoe Factory. The company manufactured the first spiked running shoes for athletes. It was the same shoes that helped the 800-meter runner Lina Pradke win a gold medal in the 1928 Amsterdam Olympic Games. For some time, their company was the sole manufacturer of sports shoes in Germany. As a result, after the Nazi takeover, their factory became a shoe supplier to Hitler Youth Clubs. During the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, their shoes were even used as the official sports shoes for the German teams. The brothers continued to collaborate with the Nazi regime which led to both of them joining the Nazi party. Rudolf was thought to have been a firm supporter of the Nazis, whereas Adolf was opposed to the regime. This caused an ideological deep divide between the two, widening the already growing gap between the two brothers. Also, it wasn't always a great time for the brothers during the period of World War II because during that moment, their relationship was put under immense strain. Their business did survive the wreck of the war, but their relationship as brothers did not. They agreed to split up their company in 1948. So now, what did Nazis do to the brothers that divided them? During the war, their factory was forcefully converted to produce military equipment for the Nazis. They had no choice but to help produce a weapon described as a shoulder-type rocket launcher used as an anti-tank weapon. The Dazzler factory continued to make equipment for the Nazis until the Allies pushed in and captured their town. The brothers' factory was almost destroyed by US troops in 1945, but somehow, Adolf's wife was able to convince the soldiers that they were only manufacturing athletic shoes. The soldiers started buying the Dazzler brothers' shoes, and this was the reason why their shoes became popular among American soldiers who occupied Germany. However, when World War II ended, the brothers' relationship and partnership started to disintegrate. What happened? The family never really confirmed the reason for what happened with the brothers, but there certainly are rumors. One theory states that the brothers' wives did not get along. The second rumor claims that Adolf was jealous of Rudolf. Rudolf was a known womanizer, and Adolf suspected that something was going on between his brother and his wife. But the story that would really make sense was this. Rudolf was suspicious of his brother for giving the Allies information of his whereabouts. Rudolf abandoned his duties in the front lines of the war and then was arrested and imprisoned by the Allies. He was also accused of being a member of the Nazi protection squad. Why would Adolf do that? Because of the American denazification program and the persecution of high-level Nazi party members. Rudolf was suspected to be part of this group of high-level Nazis and thus he was interrogated by the Americans. But Adolf was not free of this either, and thus this story goes a little deeper. Adolf was also taken into custody and faced trial for his cooperation with the Nazis. Adolf was declared to be a belasterer. The belasterers were those who profiteered from the Nazi regime. Rudolf fueled the accusations during Adolf's trials by providing declarations that said Adolf had organized the production of weapons himself. After some testimonies from the mayor and his wife, his category was downgraded to follower. With this, he was able to continue managing his shoe factory but still faces supervision from the denazification board. Adolf was formally allowed to resume the management of his factory in 1947. Because they ratted each other out in fear of prison and prosecution, the brothers became enemies and became hostile to each other. The brothers then established their own athletic company. Adolf took his share of the company and continued making Dazzler shoes for athletes. In 1949, he registered his new company Adolf Dassler Sports Shoe Fabric. This company would later be known as Adidas, a name from Adi, his nickname, and Das from his family name. Rudolf, on the other hand, used his share to build the company Puma. Everyone in their town was either loyal to Adidas or Puma, but never both. There was even a town that was nicknamed the Town of Bentnex because of the residents' habit of looking at each other's shoes to figure out whether they would like to talk to the person or not. What was Adolf's strategy to make his products stand out from competitors? Simple. 
he needed to make his brand recognizable to many and he did this by designing Adidas shoes with three stripes sewn on the side. This three stripes logo became the company's trademark. Customers recognized Adidas because of this logo and were more likely to buy the shoes. Adidas decided to expand their production line during the late 1960s to enter into apparel. In 1967, Adidas released a suit made of new lightweight synthetic fibers that were both stylish and comfortable. The Three Stripes logo was emblazoned down the arms and legs. The German footballer Franz Beckenbauer was the one who marketed the track suit. It was a genius idea since Franz was also one of the most famous players in the world. So what about fashionable sporting apparel? Was this really relevant to Adidas growth? Yes, it did impact Adidas in a huge way and it was a key milestone for Adidas. Fashionable sporting apparel became popular in the USA because of the jogging craze during the 1970s. This meant that everyone could now wear the Adidas brand when going for a run. What really made Adidas relevant was its brand recognition. Many love the simplicity and originality of the brand logo and designs. Adidas is also known for its quality and reliability. They stay on top of trends while other brands struggle. It was a good thing that Adidas decided to expand from sports shoes to include sports apparel in their brand. Their success could also be attributed to their strategic collaborations with athletes, rappers, fashion designers, and artists. This proved that Adidas is flexible in appealing to multiple markets. We talked about the history of the Adidas brand, its Nazi connection, the sibling rivalry between the brothers who initially founded the company, and how Adidas is growing. If you want to know how the other company turned out, check out our video on Puma's brand story in the description below.